Oh. Welcome to another Raggy's Beers, Wines and Spirits review. Today, after the England match, yesterday, need a beer. Yeah, pity the referee wasn't on our side, but uh, no sour grapes, eh? Yeah, and the bloody linesman who was blind. Anyway, today's uh, review, another of the iconic beers of Britain. Fuller's London Pride. If you haven't tasted this, you haven't lived. You know, it is one of the top beers. Um, as with a lot of beers, there seems to be differences between cans, bottles and cask. This one is 4.7%. And uh, the bump from the back reads, authentic, original and full of character. London Pride is unmistakably London's beer. Brewed with a rich, distinctive base, a British malt and a diverse blend of Target, Goldings, Challenger and North Down hops for vibrancy and balance. The essence of our capital city and the people who call it home. Yeah. What a load of rubbish. But anyway, um, on top of me, uh, elderflower sparkling. Now, from their website... Hmm. Crystal malts combined with spring harvested pale ale varieties Concerto and Pepino give pride its in inimitable depth and balance. So, taste profile. Look, you see tawny. Uh, smell, malt and hops. Um, taste, balanced malt and bitterness. And a food pairing. London Pride and Roast Chicken is a perfect marriage of flavours. Oh, I could just eat some roast chicken there. Um, let's have a look for the reviews, see what other people's put in reviews, just out of curiosity. So, we'll go for ratebeer.com on this. And on their site, read more. Right. Aha. Uh -huh. 2.9 out of 5, it's not the greatest. Clear copper colour with a thin head. Aromas of barley and caramel. Taste similarly, similarly but more complex. Uh, 3.6 on this review. Bottle many times. Pours crystal clear copper with a frothy head. Aroma is fruity Esther's biscuit. Uh, another one, 3.2 on this one. Bottle, 330 mils. Copper, some off white foam, but British ESBs are not famous for their head, anyway. And, uh, Tap it to E for Ibis. Dark amber with creamy right head. Very low carb, very mild with light top and cigarette. Okay, must have been smelling what was in the pub that night. So. I've got a glass. Let's give this a pour. Clean glass as well for a change. Not clean this. So yeah, lovely copperness. Like they said, not much of a head. And uh, not low carbonation as well. There is carbonation there, but it is low. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. I think it depends what side of the glass, actually, because there's, there's widgets in different places on this. Unless I've got a crack on the inside of the glass. It's actually frothing up just right on the edge. Halfway up, which is a bit strange. I have many of these, you know, I used to look forward to these in Sainsbury's when people used to break the packs and we had to, you know, they, say one got broke and we had three separates and we'd reduced them down. At that time they reduced down to something daft like 50 pence and uh, wow, did I drink some. There's a strength to it but not over. 
Um, yeah, malty, nothing massive on smell. You can smell like malts, but don't know where to get biscuits from, I don't know. I mean, the colour's beautiful. It's a lovely beer, you know, it's definitely a, um, a pub beer, more than a bottled beer. Yeah, you do get into caramel with this. Maltiness, a bit of a sweet aftertaste. Still very light on carbonation. To me, I mean, I've tasted a lot of these. I haven't tasted it much for the last year or so. But at one stage, when I worked at Sainsbury's for those five years, you know, I tasted a lot of this. And to me, I don't know if they've lowered the strength over the years. I could have sworn it was a 5, 5.2, 5%, you know. So 4.7. So whether they bought it down, because obviously uh, in places like Scotland, they're going to be charging you for your, the alcohol content. And uh, if, you have, if you listen to me before, like your basic cider and your diamond white and them sort of things, the cheapo cider that's quite strong. They say they sell for £3 a bottle. When that law in Scotland comes in to, you know, basically stop people drinking too much, uh, I don't think it'll work, but, uh, you know, there's other ways of means. You can brew your own, brew it a hell of a lot cheaper. But... Um, a three pound bottle of that sort of cider will shoot up to something like seven or eight quid. So, you know, um, I think companies will be brewing weaker uh, just to lower, keep the price low, to obviously not lose sales. But sometimes brewing weaker is not going to do you no favours because if you brew too weak and lose the taste, then you risk uh, people just not buying your product anymore. Certainly, uh, certainly doesn't taste as good as it used to. Unless, as I get further down the pint, you know, um, my taste buds get used to it. Cause obviously, today I've been at work all day. Not so hot today, thankfully. I mean, it's only 78 degrees in, in the bare room today. So, uh, that's changed from nearly 95 degrees of what we had the other week. So, yeah, followers. Make some fantastic beers. ESB is definitely one of their great beers. 1845, for me, is their top beer. It's a stronger beer. If I remember rightly, it's, is it 7%, 7.3? Keep my be 7%. And uh, it's definitely, I think, they're king of their beers. And it shouldn't be about strength. Strength shouldn't make something the king beer. But that beer has got bags of flavour, bags of taste. And, you know, you won't want too many before you're on your back. This, to me... It's more like a session beer now than, than uh, you know, a standout beer. I mean, obviously the name London Pride, everybody knows it when it's on the shelves um, in, in the big supermarkets. They all stock it. Uh, it sells well, you know. It doesn't sell as well in bottle as it does in cans, which is might be a price factor involved there, because obviously cans, you're going to get it for, say, 5 50 for a pack of four. Whereas in bottles you're paying two quid most of the time these days because a lot of supermarkets, especially Sainsbury's, don't do offers now on beer, which is uh, sad. But um, yeah, not as highly ranked, you know. And uh, I just like to do my best, but I always like to be positive with beers because, you know, apart from Budweiser Lager, which was atrocious, you know, all the beers, the amount of work that goes into them, you know, you want to give a fair and a good judgment, but. At the moment,
you know, you are getting the maltiness and slight aftertaste. No massive flavours coming through. A bit of caramel. So, out of five. Ooh. Now, I did Newcastle Brown the other day, Brown Ale, and I read the reviews on that, and uh, it seems to me that um, being brewed in Holland has, has not done no favours, because it's not the beer it was years ago. And uh, sad to say, this to me doesn't taste like the beer it was years ago. It may well be, it may well be that I've tasted so many good beers that when you come back to some of your favourites that they're just not as good anymore. So, you know, so out of five, mm. I'm going to give it quite a low for this. I'd say about a 4.3. It's, uh, I mean, it's obviously still commands a good rating, but certainly no way near the top beers. Which is, you know, pretty sad, really. I mean, it might be that you drink three or four. Um, you know, the taste comes out better and all that. But as a one-off, I mean, every beer should be judged on one pint only. And to me, that is, is more of a session beer than a, than a standout beer these days. Thanks for watching. Strange.